My name is Riley Keough and I play Daisy Jones in Daisy Jones and the Six. Hi, I'm Camilla Marone and I'm playing Camilla Dunn. My name is Will Harrison and I play Graham Dunn. My name is Tom Wright, I'm playing Teddy Price, record producer extraordinaire. My name is Sam Claflin and I play Billy Dunn. Hi, my name is Suki Waterhouse and I play Karen in Daisy Jones and the Six. I'm Sebastian Chacon, I play Warren. My name is Josh Whitehouse, I play Eddie Roundtree in Daisy Jones and the Six, the bass player. I learned back then that if you run off stage because you're too scared, that somebody else will take your spot. I guess the experience that I would say I learned from that is just to do all the work before you get to set or before you get to the audition so that on the day you can just let it go and relax and not be in your head thinking about things. I mean, I, I definitely use all of it. It's a, it's a weird thing with the acting training where you're also kind of trying to forget it all at the same time as you're using it. I think the, 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 the number one thing is listening to other actors and uh, never to play the end of the scene at the beginning. Uh, the one piece of advice that I think I, I've sort of kept with me is that it's okay to fail. It should be a very collaborative process, I believe. What you think is not always the right way and the only way. You learn how to be a team player and not um, step over anyone else and um, thrive but be in, in your group together and understand what everybody needs and how different everybody is. I think the main thing that you learn in, in drama club or acting, you know, as a kid is like to not be embarrassed. You know, and to just give yourself over to it. I think I was given like a, what now wouldn't be a giant monologue, but was a huge one uh, from Romeo and Juliet when I was maybe 11 or something. I remember looking at it for the first time going like, I don't even know what this means. And then I learned it all. And I remember just being impressed with myself. <laughs> Does that ever make you uh, want to work behind the camera? I actually have directed a film. I did a play called Stumpy Legs Too Short in college. Really dark, but it was really fun. <laughs> what happens in the moment uh, is more important than the moment you, you, you try to uh, intellectually create. Um, Rod Steiger once said that uh, he felt the best acting was when instinct meets intellect. I played Malvolio in Twelfth Night. I had like the, the yellow stockings with the all that and uh, that was definitely like a give yourself over to the silliness kind of role. Sebastian is most like his character, but he's not like his character, but he is in the group probably the funny one. I think, like he makes me laugh anyway. <laughs> okay, I know who is least like their character, and that's Riley. And then I would say Suki is the most like Karen because she's really cool and suave and like the ultimate cool British girl. <laughs> I wonder what they said about me. For least like, it's probably a toss up between Billy and Eddie, because they're nice guys in real life. Sebastian is most like his character. Probably Sam is least like his character. I think we're all quite similar to our characters. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's because we're all method actors, obviously. But no, I, I think I think there's there's relatable qualities for all of us in our characters. I, I don't know. I'd say me, um, apart from the alcoholism and the drug taking, of course. I would say probably the most like their character. I think maybe Warren and Seb, just that playful, kind of very in the moment, very present energy. And the least, I would have to say, probably Sam, because Billy's like incredibly grumpy the whole time, and Sam is the opposite. He's an incredibly charming English gentleman. The most like his character is uh, Will as Graham. Graham is like a good-natured individual. I feel like Will resonates on a similar frequency. The least like his character, I would say, might be Sam. Sam, in reality, has, you know, his stuff together much more so than Billy does, you know? There isn't one. I'm Teddy Price. I'd love to be Daisy Jones, just because I think it's so cool that she sings and her voice is incredible and her outfits and center stage. Maybe Warren, because I'd like to learn how to play the drums better. 
Daisy Jones. I'd love to play Daisy Jones. But I feel like because the two characters are so similar, uh, that actually, uh, in, a, in a sense, I am playing Daisy Jones, just, just in a, a male body. I could play any other character on the show, I'd play Billy. Shut up! <laughs> That's so funny. I would have quite liked to be maybe like Graham just so I could have like learned how to shred like him. I mean, Will has basically learned how to play the guitar like Blake Mills, who created all of our music. So it's, he's come away with some pretty good talents from this show. Oh, Daisy Jones, for sure. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, I mean, to be totally honest, every scene is really fun. Once Daisy joins the band, spoiler alert, it's been really fun because I get to be with all the, the guys in Suki. And I think playing music because we rehearse so much. Well, when we read episode 10 um, in the table read, we were unwell. I mean, it's like, it was all of us on FaceTime and I basically had to like step off the FaceTime. I was like choking on, on my tears to the point where I couldn't breathe and Sam was uncontrollable and um, I don't know why it just like really hit us episode 10, but it's such like a roller coaster. Episode 10 is going to be so fun to film, so challenging because everything goes down. I mean, really looking forward to some of the bigger concert stuff. I think that's going to be really fun. One scene that was really fun to shoot was uh, when we first played Let Me Down Easy all together as a band. That was a blast. The Billy Teddy scene in Teddy's Maserati when he takes Billy to, to meet his daughter for the first time. I can't ever meet me like this. There's not gonna be a second chance here, son. I don't know, just performing with, you know, I mean, next to nobody out in the audience, but there was something about the atmosphere of being on a big stage for the first time. We didn't have much rehearsal time either, so it was kind of, we were sort of thrown into the, the deep end, kind of really exciting us all about what, what, what it is that we're doing. I think the most fun has been um, when we've been doing shows, like when we did Diamond Head. All right, is it just me? What was that? Um... <laughs> Not just you. Dude. Come on. <laughs> you were incredible up there. I mean, every time you move, they just lost it. That whole experience, really feeling like we were on stage. I feel like as Warren, I'm just trying to have fun in every scene, you know? We're always, I'm like running around, like jumping up and down, like trying to get the energy up for every scene. So they're all just kind of a blast. It was really fun uh, shooting when you first meet the band uh, and we are, you know, we're 17 years old playing our first gig. And I'm a little bit nervous and I thought that was really fun. Uh, not necessarily challenging, but um, really fun. There hasn't been a scene particularly that was really challenging. There have been moments because we're shooting out of order. We're not shooting episode one, two, three, four, five, where sometimes we do so much in one day that I'm kind of going, oh my God, where are we in terms of the story? And that's been a little bit hard. The most challenging scene so far, I mean, for me, it's any scene where like, I don't have any words and they just tell me to look somewhere and think about something. Those are the worst. <laughs> Getting in and out of a Maserati is the most challenging. Probably the Baldy Mountains where we did the Aurora cover shoot. We were literally on a mountain like this with furniture almost kind of falling off. I also had a skin reaction that day, so I kind of looked like a cracked egg. So there was like a lot of elements and personal issues I was dealing with that day. Physically challenging is probably uh, the, the the album cover on Mount Baldy. It was like hailing, freezing cold. I was wearing this basically. Horrible. I think the onset vibe is we're really annoying when we're all together <laughs> and it's hard to make us work probably. Silly, the vibe is silly. We're like adult summer camp and we're being paid for it. 
so it's <laughs> like the ultimate job. We are all in a group chat, we're like all best friends. There's actually no drama, which I know people won't believe and people wish that there was like juicy drama, but there really isn't juicy drama at all. We're just like all best friends. Unfortunately, no no prank wars yet. You've got my gears turning there. It's, it's actually a very mellow set with a lot of really good high energy personalities. And I lived in a lot of, um, group houses in the 70s and it feels like a group house, a group home. From the start actually we were all on a group WhatsApp. We I think we all understood, you know, we all like each other anyway, but I think we all understood that we really needed to be connected. So and because the show took longer to shoot, it's been two and a half years of basically there's been a joke, a WhatsApp sent every single day. I think between us uh, kind of the things that, like the lyrics of certain songs will just kind of be thrown around all the time because we've rehearsed them so much. So there's a bird in the bush. But it will be like, there's a bird in the bush, there's a bird in the bush. You'll get it when you see the show, but. No, I mean, we've been working on this for, for like two years at this point. So we all just know each other really well. It's like super easy, just like pretending to be a band that spends all this time together just comes super naturally, you know? Like it's like a family. I think I'm the most proud of our music sequences because we worked really hard to get it right. And, you know, we rehearsed for months and months as a band and a few of us had never done music at all before myself and Sam. The scene that I'm most proud of is a scene between uh, Sam and myself, uh, Billy and Teddy, when they're discussing the possibility of Billy going inside and meeting his daughter for the first time. I'm most proud of um, Sunset Strip scenes where we all perform as a band just because learning these entire songs and so many of them has just been such an incredible labor of love and that to me just makes my, my heart just warm because I, d I don't really know many kind of movies or tv shows where you actually become a band and we can actually all play together so i'm incredibly proud of us for that so i'm really proud of a lot of the the improv stuff that we've got to do and little things that i've slipped in and little moments that we've had and after a good take like that you're just like oh cool like i wonder if they're gonna keep any of this you know that last episode yeah it's an intense one. It's gonna be one of those projects where like all of it's gonna make me cry. Because it was there's so much love in the making of it. My name in the credits? Teddy Price. The price is right. I'm excited to see us older and looking back and that nostalgic feeling and understanding the tapestry of all of our journeys together. Um, it's hard to pin down one thing, but I'm really looking forward to seeing all of our charisma connect on, on screen. Like in any of the episodes, I'm, I'm really excited to just see the dynamic between everybody. Well, if you're a fan of the book, then you know that something central to the book is that you never know if a character is telling the truth. And the cool thing about the show, especially if you're a fan of the book, is that you'll get to see what happened that day and, you know, then decide for yourself. It's like going back in a time machine, um, uh, really. I, th I think that's what's so magical about this series. As much as I may not be up to scratch of like a, a, a frontman guitarist, like the rest of the band are so musically gifted and talented and there's so much drama in the series. There's so much relatable content, despite the fact that it is set in the 70s. There's still so much that people can kind of look at and go, oh my God, that I've, be, I've lived through that or I've done that. I think they'll enjoy that. I think they'll enjoy seeing, seeing songs together that come together, seeing how their like love lives um, impact the songwriting and like what makes, what makes it into a song. It's an interesting experience because you get to see the story, but one thing you don't get to really experience is, this, is the music, right? Like they'll say, oh, we recorded this song and it was amazing. It was lightning in a bottle. And I'm like, okay, I wonder what it sounded like, you know? And, and so, like, watching the show, you'll be able to just play the music and hear it. For you. It's really good, you know? I, I was just, I'm constantly, like, impressed with, like, how good the music is. Like, I will be walking around, like, singing songs from the show. Uh, this show is interesting because it already has such a strong fan base. Uh, a lot of people love this book, and a lot of people are really excited about the show. Like, this is a real new album. 
And it, this is about a band that, you know, are fake, but now we're real because we're not doing covers, you know, and these songs are all by Blake and he's, uh, he's, he's made a really great album. So I'm quite excited for, you know, people, I feel like people are gonna watch this and then go, oh wait, but like, I really like this music. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was definitely in drama in school, and then I was in um, like theater kind of kids acting class when I was young. Like every actor, I was like in school plays, and it wasn't that great, and I definitely wasn't great. And uh, then I started taking acting classes when I was a, a little bit older. Yeah, I went to like Shakespeare summer camp and some other summer programs before I went to school for acting at Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh. Hell no. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but no, I was I was not in, in drama club. I've been involved with sort of drama, you know, out of school and in school, um, sort of since about, I was about 15, 16. I've always sort of liked impersonating people and pretending to be anyone but myself. I used to be in drama club outside of school because, I don't know, something about doing that inside of school was like too embarrassing for me, so I, I, would, do it, I would do it outside of school. I worked with some great people. It was. It was wonderful. I highly recommend going to drama club. Um, I got kicked out of drama club in middle school, though. It's not going to school. <laughs> um, 